yeah, 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 another Sunday is in the books, yes sir, so it is time for the number one hip hop podcast in the world, you damn right, and we call the podcast, banging, banging, on, on, on. lunch table, lunch table, yeah, <laughs> and now I'm camp from the port, it's your boy Mike Jones, and we are available, um, by care of the what digital uh, platform on uh, yeah <laughs> on uh, audio boom yes sir we are at a uh, Google Play yeah did Apple Podcast you did am right Spotify uh huh Stitcher okay and the iHeart Media app uh, yeah, yeah you got damn <laughs> yeah, right you, know what I'm you gotta say it like Vince McMahon sometimes you know what I'm saying <laughs> you're fired. Fire! Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh yeah, man! Hey, well, man, we're gonna we're gonna spice up the uh, hip hop conversation for many people today, Jones, and I can't wait personally. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, you know what, man? Wait, without further ado, let's let's get right to it. Okay. Banging on lunch tables. Yeah, damn right. Jones, uh, Scarface is in need of a kidney, man. Man, I'm worried. I'm I'm very worried, man. Yeah, I, I won't even lie, and uh, and you know, usually, you know, uh, I would be an advocate of somebody uh, of telling people like, man, don't be going to Twitter for your news. But um, the fact that Scarface actually went to Twitter <laughs> to say yeah. that uh, that uh, he he was uh, he found out his blood type and uh, that he was in need of a kidney, and um, it just reminded me of how real not only um, uh, COVID nineteen is. Uh, mm-hmm. But it also just let me uh, uh, reminded me rather of how serious hip hop health is. Yes, and mm-hmm. um, I really do hope that he gets what he needs. Um, but yes, and at, and at the same time, I also hope that once he gets what he needs, that he improves his lifestyle to stick around for a couple more decades at minimum. You know. Man, and you already know. And man, unless you know, uh, because I think this is brought on by his bout with uh COVID nineteen that he had earlier this mm-hmm. year, man. Yeah. So it's like it lets you know, like COVID ain't no joke, man. The, the joint is real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No matter absolutely. what, no, no matter what Agent Orange got going on in the White House, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is a uh, that is a definite fact. So yes, um, everyone, uh, August, uh, August, I'm tripping. October 9th. Uh, mm-hmm. Scarface did tweet out, just found out uh, my blood type, uh, just found out blood type, don't matter if you are a donor, they will match me with my kidney in exchange, so anyone can be a donor, can't thank y'all enough. Oh, so, man. So, yeah, yeah, you know, um, but one of uh, Hip Hop's legends, um, I, I'll be, I'll be honest, Jones, I, I am not an organ donor, um, nor have I ever been a person to uh, personally advocate for it. Um, okay. But I do hope that um, the people that, that have that level of uh, generosity and philanthropy will uh, assist Brother Mob. You know what I mean? Man, I, like, I've like i always been an organ donor. I always look at it like this, man. Like if I, if I ever check out for whatever reason, mm-hmm. I'm not using it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And... Even though I do believe in certain conspiracies, I like I'm an overall like uh, positive person, so I try not to think that they ain't gonna like not rescue me just to be like, hey man, he got some good kidneys in there. Let's get them joints. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I would I would hope I would hope. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you hope, you hope. That's for sure. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. You know, um, I, you know what? In the scenario that you are speaking of, Jones. I don't have a problem mm-hmm. with that. Like, if, if I'm on my deathbed and it's, and it's about that time, you know yeah. what? Yeah, go ahead. Do what you want to do. Uh, but, right. you know, um, I remember the first time when I was uh, told about being an organ donor and asked if I was. I was 16 years old, Jones. <laughs> okay. And the last thing I was like, man, no, I'm not giving nobody my kidney or lung. Are you crazy? <laughs> I, I was like, it sounds so reckless, so crass, but... I'm like, hey, that's what I was, but I was like, man, I'm gonna be here for a long time. I don't want to be out here with all my shit. And, right? Uh, yeah, I think you know what I'm saying. So, so I, I've always like emphatically selected no 
Um, <laughs> and, 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 I'll, and I'll be real, Jones. At almost forty, man, I, I don't. I, I haven't really changed on that stance, and I, and I feel kind of like an asshole. But at the same time, <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, but hey, I mean, my my full able body is willing to help anyone. Like, yeah, right, right, right. You know yeah, saying? just not. I just don't want to give anything up. Hey, look, man, don't feel like an asshole. Those are yours. You know what I'm saying? Your right. kidneys, your eyeball, your body parts are yours to do with whatever you please, even once you, you check out, man. So don't feel like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, would, I would just say as a donor, maybe reconsider. But if not, so what? You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Hey, man, once I hit about 70, man, we'll talk. Man, when we we'll 75, 80. You know what I'm oh, saying? yeah? Because, like, I plan to be around to like 115. So, I mean, you know, that okay. last, like, I probably won't be like fucking like real hardcore at like 85 or anything like true, that. True, you true. You know, I, I'll be probably like chilling out somewhere. So, you know, maybe, may, maybe I can, I can deal without it. I mean, I'm, I'm not a smoker of a, well, of cigarettes. Uh, right, right, so, right. You know what I'm saying? So, I, everything I have is, uh, uh, pretty f- uh, full functioning, so you know maybe maybe mm-hmm. when, I, maybe when I'm, I, I feel like I'm reaching the home stretch, man. But we'll, we'll go ahead and change that, uh, that, that, <laughs> that into a why, you dig? Right, ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but even though uh, the lighthearted moment did just happen here, we do want to send out prayers and condolences to uh, Scarface and his family. Definitely, and uh, we definitely want uh, anybody that is uh, willing to help him and wants to help him that can help him to do so. And uh, yes, um, I mean, hey, we can't stress enough, man. COVID uh, doesn't care if you've created classic rap albums, uh, man. It don't care. Right. Or don't care if you work at Target part time. You did what I'm saying? Like, it's, no, it's uh, it's out here, and you definitely better get a grip on your your health as well as your reality around you. And, Hell uh, yeah! And and always do the right thing, um, not for yourself, for the people around you. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Banging on lunch tables. You damn right. Jones, I've seen an article that um, I didn't read. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. And I, and, I, and, I, and I don't mind saying that because um, I, I just like the um, I like the question that it made me think of. Okay. Um, so uh, we're going to deal in uh, hypotheticals here today with one of your favorite MCs. Mm. Okay. So, um, so um, the, uh, the article that i seen, uh, the headline for it was... Uh, is Kendrick Lamar planning on leaving TDE, or is he is he you know thinking about it or whatever, whatever? And um, okay. um, it it made me think: What if Kendrick left the TDE aftermath Interscope engine? Like, what what if uh, Kendrick goes the uh, uh, the the Rock Marciano, the Action Bronson, the Freddie Gibbs route? You know, like what what, okay. what if he what if he takes it? Right back under the ground, he leaves the mainstream uh, world alone as far as uh, his uh, product being released as such. Uh, okay. What, what do you think happens, uh, if anything happens, to uh, Kendrick Lamar in that situation? Man, you know what? I don't think he would take it back to the underground route. I just think it would be the whole new label situation. It would be interesting, though. Just based on like the family dynamic that uh, TDE has always touted that they had, you know, mm-hmm. like yo, I, I slept in the studio, yo, top was there for me when I ain't had nothing, mm-hmm. type of deal. So, what what that would look like moving forward is interesting, and I would wonder would it speed up the timeline of him releasing music? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think it's possible? Um, I uh, when I was uh, reading that headline. It, made, mm-hmm. it started to make me think that uh, are people thinking that Kendrick Lamar's success is only predicated to TDE aftermath and Interscope? Mm. Uh, like, and, uh, um, and, and I started thinking about that, and the first thing I thought was Kendrick Lamar leaving TDE might be the worst thing that ever happened to TDE, not Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So. Um, and, and I come from this perspective, Jones. Um, TDE, as a uh, staff label in the M and F and crew, don't get mm-hmm. me, don't get me wrong. We uh, we do like their output. They they do put out quality product, and uh, a lot of positive does happen from their roster, top to bottom. Right. However, the uh, the second man 
or or second person, I should say, because they got you know scissors on the label. As right. um, on the totem pole, you could argue is Schoolboy Q, but the margin is so broad between him and Kendrick Lamar that uh, it makes everybody else seem even more or less than they may truly be. Mm, okay. You know, the, the, the real three-headed monster of, of TDE is Kendrick, Schoolboy, and SZA. Right. And, uh, but... It seems like there is like a um, like if this was the hundred meter dash, it's like a two point three second gap. Yeah, from from yeah. Kendrick to you know Q and Scissor, and uh, and, and, hmm. it's, and it's no disrespect to them. It's just the uh, it's just the landscape in which they live in. Like like for instance, I remember um, when uh, when Blank Face came out and uh, Schoolwork, he was doing an interview. And uh, uh, one of the uh, the interviewers was uh, basically trying to ask him, like, what was the album about? Like, what was this, you know what I'm saying? Like, a- asking so many questions. Basically, tell me what your album is about since it's out. And in and, uh, and, and a very comical, but I think in a very real way, he was like, hey, listen to my shit like y'all do Kendrick shit. And then and you tell me what it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> right, yeah. Like, yeah, no, don't, like, you, you'll run. And, like, and, and, and to his point, you know, uh, blogs and personalities like people it just stands like everybody everybody will run to a Kendrick album and write think pieces and essays and and will come with dissertations and affidavits about what every song means but when it comes to a schoolboy Q or J Rock or Absol or Reason or uh, or a Sir album we just like oh I didn't even get to it yet or oh man I'm, I'm gonna get to mm. it is, is Kendrick on it like you know what I'm saying like and, and it's, right yeah so so thinking about that I think uh you know the uh Kendrick leaving TDE would would really hurt TDE a, a lot much as far as the uh, the allure because you know we really sat and and we propped TDE up based on the mm-hmm. Kend- the Kendrick's album success of two albums right yeah you know we're we're, we're having that we're having a different conversation if if to Biff a butterfly and good kid mad city come out on on like at Atlantic, <laughs> like about TDE, you know what I mean? But but you know what though? I'll say this: it's it's two things working, and it kind of works against them in the end. And I'll show you what I mean. To start, I think like the combination of what they were doing early on, like uh, around like 2011, 2012, mm-hmm. and everybody like ab- basically black hippie firing all all, all cylinders mm-hmm. individually as well as collectively. You know what I'm saying? was a great look so it helped to establish uh tde as a force to be reckoned with mm-hmm. then you add on to the fact that kendrick dropped those two phenomenal albums it's like i right, bet it's more eyes on us mm-hmm. and, and as they moved along though i don't think the rest of i guess you could say black hippie or tde was able to keep up artistically with or just attention wise with the hype of their label mate, cause like I I love Blank Face as an album. I think that might be Schoolboy Q's best project. Mm-hmm. The the hype surrounding him wasn't there as it was with uh, what was that album uh, prior to? Uh, not uh, oh, Blank Faces. Uh, Oxymoron. Oxymoron. Yeah, the hype wasn't as big for him for Blank Face as it was Oxymoron. Mm-hmm. Luckily, J Rock was able to do better. With his last project, then he did uh, nine double oh five nine, yeah, and and then like Ab Soul, he's been gone since I want to say maybe 2016, 2017. So it's like they don't keep up with the like them taking so long to release albums. I should say mm-hmm. diminishes the mystique because if they're ta- if they're all taking a long time. And we like this guy the most. Mm-hmm. He's gonna get the most anticipation and attention. Mm-hmm. Like for them, I would say the two year cycle, year and a half cycle will be their best bet to keep cranking shit out. You know what I'm saying? And right. I, I know you. I know you want to live and you know just be with your family and y'all ain't really with the industry shit. But to keep up that attention and the gas going in the engine for what TDE is as a label, y'all gotta. You know people gotta be dropping constantly. You can't take. 
a year off, essentially. Like, I think this Reason album that just came out might be the only TDE project this year, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, yeah. I, if, I, I think so. And that's behind the re, the Sir project that came out last year or year before last. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's not enough gas to keep it going if we always waiting on the main dude. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Everybody is dope. But Come on, man. We need some consistency. Everybody can't take three years off, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, to drop a project. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, you know what? Um, I I do agree uh, with your with your with your overall premise, and um, but I do think that speaks more to the microwave era of music that people call it that exists because are people really making music? <clears throat> That you want to hear for a year, for two years, for three mm, years. Okay. You know, versus True. versus not. Like, um, I was just having a conversation uh, very uh, lightly on Facebook, mm-hmm. and it really occurred to me that you know, if I played your album three times front to back, um, in, in the within a year, <laughs> I must really like it. <laughs> you know right. Yeah. Saying? Yeah. Like, and, it, and it's um, but is is that really because um? The uh, the music is uh, of high quality, or am uh, am mm. I just you know, or, or or am I just struggling to find uh, a reason to to maybe listen or not? You know what I'm saying? Like, right? Yeah. I think uh, I think uh, with all of these you know groups, tandems, whatever, everybody's gonna get their run, and there's always gonna be like the next like you know hot rapper or whatever, but Right. The, but at the end of the day, it's um, the projects and what they mean to not only the artists, but to the people, I think, are the separation. Um, another reason why calling albums classic too early um, is, is situations, I think, like with TDE, right? So, yeah, like um, like, like you were just saying, like you uh, you you said that the the hype and the uh, the anticipation for oxymoron was very high. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Blank Face, not so much. And then, uh, but they're two both dope albums. But however, mm-hmm. you know, uh, what what will keep them out of classic territory is that, hey, did you listen to Oxymoron until Blank Face came out? Right, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I know mm-hmm. you, and are you still, did you still listen to Blank Face until Crash Talk came out? Yeah. Why, why, why have we all just been going back to Blank Face and uh, and we haven't recognized Crash Talk, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's like it's those type of things, and it's like we live in this moment where so much music comes out, and a lot of it is honestly really good, but the, mm-hmm. the, the classics are what's on repeat, you know? Right. And, yeah. And they'll, they'll continue to be on repeat. So I, I think uh, even just the calibration of that, you know. Um, you know, everybody's a goat. Everybody has a classic, and we're gonna talk about that in the next segment. But uh, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I think uh, in a situation like TDE's, where you know, like um, I, I don't know if he's signed still, but like even Isaiah Rashad, you know, like yeah, Isaiah Rashad was uh, booked as Southern Kendrick. You know, what I'm saying like to to a certain right, degree. yeah, and, mm-hmm. and and that did him absolutely no favors. Like, <laughs> right, yeah, and, and and here we are now um, with, with the hypothetical of uh, of Kendrick leaving TDE, uh, or if, or if he would, like, what would happen? I think um, I don't want to say the ship would sink, but it definitely wouldn't be sailing in the same breeze. Right, uh, yeah, definitely. You know, what I'm saying Where, versus like um, you know more most people. Uh, would probably be thinking that you know, especially me coming from my perspective, because I, I love to attack Kendrick stands at any chance I get. Uh, that's kind of one of my favorite <laughs> pastimes. That, um, that if he left, he'd be <laughs> stranded. But but mm-hmm. I, I honestly, I honestly don't believe so. Like I am one right. of the, even though I am not in stand territory, I am though uh, a big uh, advocate and a and a purveyor of Kendrick Lamar drops his albums off to the crew for them to mix it master it and tell them when it's going to be out like I don't think mm. he gets a lot of help with what he does so I right. I, I do give him that respect like I, I wouldn't be surprised if no more than like three people at Max Jones come up with a uh, with a uh, with a Kendrick Lamar album and one of them is not Dr. Dre <laughs> you know what I'm saying right yeah and, I feel you 
And, and, He's self-contained. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so that, um, so, you know, I, so with that being said, I won't ever put his, uh, career on the line that's saying that a label or a situation or a movement makes or breaks him I think is actually the reverse where like he makes or breaks that label that faction that situation yeah man he was him definitely being like the X factor of the crew and I can definitely see that I just I just think that like they haven't uh, Cause you spoke to the microwave era, right? Let me address that. You spoke to the yeah. microwave era, mm-hmm. and I think that is true. Like we should be listening to albums longer, but if you are also competing with other labels or other artists that are new, you're competing with the new hot dude, right? Yeah. There's a new, there's a new the baby, little baby, make the stallion coming out every year that everybody wants on all their projects, right? Mm-hmm. So not only are you competing with that, you're competing with the crew across the street, like a Dreamville, who's telling you, like, yo, man, we coming for TDE spot. But while you're not even looking at them, Griselda is doing what they're doing. So it's like you have to keep your name out there to a certain extent to be like, yo, we were fucking with. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when you take it back to, like, the mid-'90s, you know what I'm saying? Like, Death Row, rap like so so deaf, you know what I'm saying? Bad right. boy were dropping different projects, no matter who they might have been. Right. Somebody was coming out to keep the label high. It might not have been big, it might not have been Snoop every year, you know what I'm saying? But right. somebody else was there to keep the help keep the lights on. Yeah. And then I think and I think that's what is kind of TDE's problem, even though I th- thought for the longest they were like the top label. Mm-hmm. You, you you take it too long. That way you can't even stoke the fire of your number two guy to take the place while your number one guy takes three years off. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And then like then like the the hand lady of the label, she, we waiting on her to drop, so she can't even keep the lights on while the main guy is you know what I'm saying doing right. his thing. So then then your underground dude mm-hmm. in the ab soul, he don't he, he's gone and he ain't even gonna keep the lights on regardless. So it's mm-hmm. It's not enough traction. Like they gotta get that thing running just in case if somebody like Kendrick left, you got somebody else to prop up like, yeah, Kendrick is still fam. We love him. He's still he's still T D E to the heart. Mm-hmm. But we got schoolboy Q over here that's gonna run the ship. You know what I'm saying? Type of thing. Yeah, yeah. No, you know what? And to your point, Jones, uh um, especially with your your analogy with like, you know, bad boy the death row and all that, you're absolutely right because you know what, when the when the chronic which didn't really lose steam but it, but it wasn't the, the hot topic of conversation. Then then came doggy style, and yeah. then, and then came dog food by the dog pound, and then came you know uh, the, I think the above the rim soundtrack, and then you know what I'm saying, yeah. and then then on the flip on the East Coast, and you had you know Project Funk the World by Craig Mack, then you had Ready to Die, then you had Faith Evans uh, album, then you had 112, then by that time uh, Biggie comes back around again, then you got Mace, and then you know what I mean, and then and then right. the Bad Boy album, the Locks album, all, all that's coming out, so it's like yeah. The, the, you're, you're synonymous with the name, and uh, you know there, there's no way that everybody's on the on the same uh, you know clock of yeah hey yo we we in album mode right now so everybody's writing to put out an album like right now it's like no nah, you can stack it probably six to eight months and uh, right every, yeah every quarter or every other quarter somebody is coming out because they they still have a lot of guys that need to uh, or artists I should say they still got a lot of artists that need to. You know, establish themselves even at an ab soul level, in my view. So yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. So that that there's that um, also into play. But yeah, um, you know, and also in this era, Jones to um, sidebar somewhat. I don't think uh, any actual artist that is in the music industry for the long haul for and for for the artistic route is ever going to need a uh, a team or a label again like and, mm, and, when, okay. and, when, and when i say need i mean like uh you ain't shit without us like you know what i'm saying i'm, I'm talking about one of those right. things like the, okay. the the same level of label politics i don't believe can be played that it could have been even 20 years ago you know, mm. like there there was a time uh where like uh like like for instance let's 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 use DMX for an example you know uh if DMX were to leave Def Jam 
and try to do his shit in 2000, good luck, buddy, because you just put out about 12 million albums with us and that, and where the engine is definitely a big part of your exposure. Like you right. dope, you have great, you have some great projects and some great songs under your belt. But at the end of the day, you know this 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 Def Jam, this Island Def Jam budget is really what made that go. Exactly. Uh, we're not in that particular space anymore, uh, especially when you know nobody's counting streams correctly, um, and obviously you know uh, with COVID considerations in place, where you can. Book yourself on four or five festivals, um, do your own tour, build your online presence, and uh, and do direct to consumer selling. Yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying, like, and, and and you can and you can see that major label recoup money in your first week if you you know what I'm saying a hundred percent in if if you if your overhead is low. And you and your first week sales are, you know, even shit, 70, 50 to 100,000 copies, you know what I'm saying? Or mm-hmm. downloads or streams or however it works. So uh, I'm just out of the mindset that uh, any entity is holding more po- uh, power than the content creator itself at this right. point. And, and, yeah. I, and, I, and, and I really do think that's partially because of what... Um, uh, what what the industry is um that is kind of the problem with the industry and why everybody is you know trying to get their masters and and trying to you know make sure mm-hmm. their publishing is right and 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 trying to make sure that you know they they have the right uh, things in place because yeah like labels are labels are important as far as exposure but now you know Mark Zuckerberg has kind of fucked up the label money like yeah you know what I'm saying yeah. like you you don't really need a quarter million dollar budget for uh, for Facebook and Instagram ads <laughs> right yeah you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying like you can uh, you could essentially uh you know even a great quality album even with some of your favorite producers i want to say that you can get all in uh record mix master production and and uh facebook ads for maybe 125 150 unless you know saying you you really want to pay like a a six figures a beat which i wouldn't recommend but (laughs) right i'm saying but that's that's me i mean but who am i i've never went platinum a day in my life so but uh, <laughs> but uh, say, but saying that though the uh, the the power is has always been in the creator's hands. It's it's never it's um, as far as labels go. I mean that's why they they sign uh, young poor and disenfranchised people of color. And, True that. And give them enough money while they make the the you know send the lion's share because what well, are, are these labels who they are if. The if the albums are never created, yeah, yeah, um, man, I, I agree because then on top of that, like your name is gonna push you anyway. Yeah. Like, uh, that was a big thing. Uh, I want to say about a month and a half ago, two months ago, Steve Stout mentioning like if Drake went uh independent, there goes the music industry, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's something I would love to see not the demise of the music industry, but like, what does it look like if the biggest rapper in the game says, you know what, I'm cool on. Uh, universal, I'm gonna do my own thing, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because Drake, Drake is still going to be Drake regardless. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what does that look like in the modern era? Yeah, man, and that, that, that's a that's a really important question because to Steve Stout's point, you know, your your Travis Scott, Kanye West, your Drake, your Kendrick Lamar, your Jermaine Cole, like those guys are the reason why people are still signing deals. Because, mm-hmm. because nobody that is independent are is bigger than they are, right? So you know, and then and then if the biggest guy <laughs> were to do that, and then mm-hmm. now, and he becomes the bigger piece, like yeah, you 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 start a level, you 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 increase a new level of faith and self empowerment that we've never seen before. So yeah, I I totally agree. Wow, man. 
Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see, man. Yeah, yeah, man. So, uh, hey, you know what? We have no idea. I mean, at least I don't. I have no idea if uh, what that article <laughs> said. I just because I don't want to read like dumb shit. Like this is all a ploy in my eyes to make sure Kendrick Lamar album is coming out, and <laughs> and, and, uh, and people are writing think pieces and, and getting their SEO up with Kendrick Lamar's name so they can just <laughs> you know what I'm saying do whatever they want to do with it. So I'll, sometimes I'll take your headline, not read your article, and come up with a whole content topic for my. <laughs> <laughs> our podcast, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Banging on lunch tables. You damn right. Jones, um, we're going to talk about a, a young man, and I still say young man because we're almost the same age, and I feel like I'm young. Uh, okay. We're going to talk about a young man that dropped uh, this Friday here pretty soon. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I'll be honest, even though I haven't really, I'm not on social too tough, as you always know, but. I, even even though my spurts and my stints in and out, uh, just you know, when I'm not uh, working, I didn't see many people talking about uh, the the new project mm. that had released. So, okay, I want to kind of switch gears a little bit, and um, I want to ask you: um, Are we over? Are we officially oversaturated with uh, "He's the best," "She's the best," "He's the goat"? This is the classic uh, conversation topic. Uh, as a whole, uh, are we over? I mean, yeah, yeah, because everybody can't be the goat. Like it's not like I know that I know what people mean when they say goats. He's one of the goats, but yeah. the term is greatest of all time. Right. You know what I'm saying? No right. s on the end, no s on the end of that. You know right. what I'm saying? And so. It's not old goats, you know what I'm saying? It's just <laughs> <Right>. goat, <laughs> you know? But I do get it, and, and like, it's it's almost exhausting because everybody can't be the best. Everybody can't be number one. And, yeah, it's all opinion, you know what I'm saying? We don't have a stat sheet that really proves this is the best rapper ever or whatever. It's just all opinion-based, but, like, Man, Lil Wayne can't be the greatest of all time, and Eminem be the greatest of all time, and then Kendrick is the greatest of all time, and Jay Z is the greatest of all time. <laughs> Tupac been Tupac been dead for twenty five years, but he's the greatest of all time. Mm-hmm. You know, Andre three thousand doesn't have a solo album, but he's the greatest of all time. You know, that shit is exhausting. But it'd be like, you got it, fam. If you think so, tell me why. You know what I'm saying? At least right. I, I'll lend my ear. You know. Right. It's uh, and, and you know, um, I, I, I also want to just throw out like, from a personal standpoint, I'm very upset that it takes you one hot summer to be in the goat conversation. Like, <laughs> like oh yeah, like we're like it, it's so many people under twenty five that's ready to go, dog. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. how, how you just got here? You just got here. I've heard six mm-hmm. songs. Like, what the. F- Fuck makes you the go, <laughs> and it's uh, and, and and it's cool for everybody to have their own personal favorite rapper. But you know, I mean, obviously, you know, hip hop keeps going. That there, there is no, you know, all time list in my eyes where we sit right mm-hmm. now. Dude, you can you can do it for eras that have passed or decades that have passed. But right, so for somebody to get your all time vote right now. Especially somebody that's just like you know, they're just now starting to put out their their music for for this era. Like we, mm-hmm. we, don't, we don't even have just even going back to our our previous topic. We don't even have music that's lasting for six months. I'm I'm personally not calling anybody a goat. Of mm. any kind. I'm not calling you any kind of animal. Matter of fact, if your <laughs> album <laughs> don't don't at least tread for two quarters, like come on, right? Yeah. Like, Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to I don't care how fast music moves. We still hear certain songs play out through a whole year. We still yeah. we still see music and we still see albums play out for at least six months. That there, there are some projects that if it's really fire on it, there's four or five videos. There's four yeah. or five singles. There's remixes. Like all of that stuff still happens. Um, it's just not happening with the guy that thinks he's the GOAT. That's all. <laughs> like, Man. You know what and, I mean? And for me, it, I feel like the culture has been stretched and grown so large that if 
if people across the subgenres of the culture can't feel it or acknowledge it or say, yeah, that was rocking all year long, how are you the GOAT right. or one of the GOATs? <laughs> and that's, that's how I'm starting to look at it, right? Like, some people just reverberate throughout the culture. Like, no matter what side of the fence you fall on, if you are firmly up under the Royster 5-9, Run the Jewels, lyrics are everything shit, <laughs> and Travis Scott drops an album, and you can tell that it's moving throughout the culture type of shit, that, like, then I can kind of see where your, your claim is coming from. But if, like, the trap dudes who listen to Moneybag, Yo, and, you know, Dolph and Key Glock, you drop some shit over on the opposite end of the hip hop spectrum, and they like who or what? What you talking about? <laughs> you you not a goat, fam. You're great at what you do, but you're not mm. a goat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Word. No, absolutely. And that that should be taken into account at a, at a high level, Jones, because so many times, uh, and, I, and I'm glad you brought this up. So many times we have people, artists. Uh, fans of the artists, especially that 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 think that they're the greatest or their favorite artist is the greatest is because they don't rap like the shit they don't like, and that don't qualify mm -hmm. it either. Yeah, <laughs> like that yep. doesn't qualify it. I mean, uh, we, we've said on the show numerous times. I know I have. I know some people that think Jay Z is trash. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, same, I, same. like I, I, I've, I've heard, I've been in conversation, man, man. Jay Z overrated, it, man. That that blueprint ain't really that good. It's a job. Be I'm like, whoa, wow, wait a minute. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I mean, we we've went over the people saying like, Nas is boring. Nas is having, like he don't be really talking about shit I want to hear. And yeah, you know, we we have those things. But then on the flip side. You know, people hated MC Hammer. Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. So, but, and, and the thing is, you, you have your God given right to love or hate any of those three artists. Mm -hmm. How, however, when it comes to the skill and when it comes to what the culture is saying, you have to pay attention to that before you stake a claim um, mm -hmm. that, that is uh, an opinion to you. See, I think where a lot of this goat talk is, is like, you know, saying you're the goat is an opinion. You, right. You being the goat will be determined by the culture. Yeah. You know yeah, I saying? like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, like it, it, all the young cats that are, are rushing, like, you know, like, like they're taking pictures with goats, Jones. Like, hey, I, hey, I agree. That's that. nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I think Lil Baby got one too. And like, I, and obviously, I love Lil Baby. I was like, yo, but fam, like, you're taking a picture with a goat? Like, come on, man. Like, just. Come on, man. Just relax. <laughs> like, keep doing your shit. And let and, and let the people like uplift you to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, right. It, it took. It, I mean, it's, it's no wrong. It's I have no problem with rappers thinking that they are the best. And mm -hmm. and, and and if anybody, uh, any rapper, anybody wants to come forward and say, well, saying you the goat is just like saying you the best, like in, in the '90s. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if if that's just what it is, then then I'll dial back on this. I yeah, was like, same. but but until then. I believe that you're calling yourself the greatest rapper of all time, and I'm gonna call bullshit <laughs> because <laughs> because the the people have to put you there. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like this is that 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 that's the kind of um uh, uh democracy that is ran in hip hop. It's like yo, you know, if eventually. Jay Z got to like album number six or seven, and we were like, "Yo, man, fam, really might be the best." Like you said, he was a few years ago. <laughs> but yeah. you know what, though, I think this is what's happening, though. Mm -hmm. I think social media being such a loud voice for the minority, mm -hmm. like if if all you do is tune into what your fans got to say, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And for better for worse, if your fans is calling you the goat, or they saying you smoked every feature you own, or you got a number one album, no matter how easy it is to mm -hmm. get that. Yeah. You like the people are putting you there. You know what I'm saying? The, right. the people, the people you're in tune with, are putting you there. You know what I'm saying? Like it's almost like Trump listening to his own followers. You know, <laughs> his own supporters. Like, yeah, see, they they love me. See, look, <laughs> like no, nah, everybody don't quite feel like that. Right. <laughs> you it's, know like, what I'm saying? it's like yeah, they love you. 
we don't. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and I think this is a, like, I've said this before, I think this is an overactive response to the old heads of the late 80s, uh, mm. I mean, late 90s, early 2000s, that was saying everything in hip-hop sucked, like everything was just yeah. trash. So you watch the people that you grew up really liking get trashed. So it's like, nah, fuck that. We're going to carve our own lane. You're not going to tell me what's nice, what's classic, who the best ever. It's what I say because I'm out here doing it. Right. Hey, yeah. Hey. Also, another great and valid point, man. Um, but I, I, I do want, and, and you know what? And what's so funny for the crowd that, that exists that you're speaking of, like that um, that older crowd, that, that golden, those golden era OGs out there. Um, mm -hmm. Now, when the people that they champion drop, it's mm -hmm. crickets. It's consistently crickets. Like consistent. You yeah. Know what I'm saying like uh, like I mean even even just uh, harkening back to our um, conversation last week about Kim and Megan, it's like people are people are still trying to judge Kim on what was created in 1996 specifically. Yes. At, yes. But, but nobody's heard the 2020 album, and and, and now that doesn't count. It's no. No, it all counts. It yeah. all counts. Like in, in 2020, if, if I if I'm measuring a 2020 artist, it's about everybody who put out a body of work that can be that's for sale, <laughs> or, or or for or right. for or for just listening pleasure. You know what I'm saying? Because it doesn't have to be for sale. People do free albums all the time. Ask Chance. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I I think um, you know it, again if we're if we're going to have a goat conversations I think all artists should be more concerned about the consistency versus the title like yeah you know a, mm -hmm. a lot of people um uh, like whoever you consider a goat I'm gonna say has at least four great albums yeah I won't even I, I won't go out of the way and say there are four classics but I'm like you know it's probably one or two for sure you know yeah, but there, mm -hmm. there should be four great albums because four great albums, if you think about it in, in sequence of time, that that means that 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 is the the message pumped to a whole generation. You yeah, know what I'm saying? especially depending on how fast they come out. So, yeah, I just I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to touch base on just like just go talk for because it's been a minute mm. and and everybody is. Uh, all up in arms about just wanting to call themselves the GOAT um, no, no matter what label they're on, no matter what coast they're on no matter if they're on album one or album or mixtape six, like it's a, it's a real thing and it's like wow uh, do we do we need to bring in criteria for that or or again, I mean I'm going to stand by my, my answer is that you know, the hip hop is going to decide for you whether you are a GOAT or not, so I'll definitely. They'll put you in that spot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, banging on lunch tables. You damn right. Jones' new music came out. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I, I mean, I guess this album is new. Uh, if if we're mm. coming, it, it has a new title. Okay. Um, J Electronica. Mm -hmm. uh, Act two: uh, The Patents of Nobility. Yeah. So Jones. Um, I mean, the first thing that glares in my mind is that Shiny Sue Theory made this album too, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so we're so we're clear that Jay Electronica's favorite song by, by himself is um, Shiny Sue Theory, <laughs> right? And Jones, uh, I also want to say that this this was the album I was talking about. Mm. Silence, crickets, if you will. I didn't even see the regular people that was like, hey, yo, did you check out that J Electronica? Mm-hmm, yeah. So it, it's, it's got me wondering, um, how is this album received from the people that it's actually for? Man, you know what? From what I've seen, it ain't, it ain't been the fervent um, excitement that you would have thought it would have been, yeah. but for the mo for the most part, I keep seeing people saying they enjoy the album. Mm -hmm. But I think he kind of blew his load with the "It Was Written" joint that came out early. Like if if those two came in, came out in the opposite way, like the Act Two patents of nobility, like leaked, and then J Electronica like six uh, to nine months later was like. 
yo, new album in 40 days. Mm-hmm. I think the story of 2020 for him goes a little bit differently. Mm. But being that, like, you know, people are just, I, I don't want to say underwhelmed, but underwhelmed by his debut with Jay-Z, the It Was Written joint. Mm-hmm. I, I think he didn't have no more room left for excitement. It was like, fam, we heard you, and that's it. Like, we just we wanted to hear you. What you had to say was cool, but it wasn't what we wanted. Mm-hmm. And this coming out the way it did, it came out like with a whimper. It wasn't like, yo, yeah. at at two pets of nobility drops tomorrow. Get ready. Right. It was like somebody leaked it. Like people had it. When we clear the samples, it's on. It's gonna be on title. Mm-hmm. Like you just, you just. <laughs> You just frisbeed the shit out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, well, yeah. I guess y'all want it so bad, take it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so I think those two things is kind of why, like, it ain't get the fervent response that it should have gotten. Mm-hmm. I got you. Okay, so you know what? Because oh, I, I actually did listen to it because I, I always want to listen to a Jay Electronica album just for the right to critique and the right to have conversation about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I will say that However, um, although I do feel that it does not sound bad, it, it actually is a good sounding album. And obviously, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a dated song or, or two, I believe, on there. Um, all, four, all four, five, or eight. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I mean, hey, who's counting? You know what I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> but I, I will say that, um, you know what, I, I, I never realized how he, he's never really wrote any rap songs. If that mm-hmm. makes sense, like he's yeah. like he, he's he's got some verses with some you know with something that he that you would you could call a hook, but you know for the uh, for for J, the J Electronica fans, I, I mean again, I just I just struggle to hear what you guys heard because he hasn't put out that one song verse hook verse potential bridge hook, you know what I'm saying that. That's been like, oh wow! I can't wait to hear fucking J Electronica's album. Like, a- a- Exhibit C is not a like, it's a rap song, but it's not a rap song. You feel me? <laughs> like, like the the the, 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 the sample and just blaze hollering is not a real hook. Right. True. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so, and and, and again for I mean, and. Even though I've made the same argument about Rakim never needing the hook in the '80s, and, and he dropped what I believe is the classic of classics, the 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 problem is is that that was the '80s when we were just starting this, and and, and, and a lot of people used Rakim bars for hooks for the next twenty years. Right. Yeah. True. true <laughs> I don't that. see anybody doing that to what we're hearing from Jay Electronica right now. So. Um, mm. And, and and again, it's a it's a good project. It's a good project. I'm I'm not here to shit on it by any means, but um, right. Yeah, now now it, it is time, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Like you know, admit those crickets. Like I, I heard all y'all makeshift albums the past ten years, right? And, um, you know, I didn't enjoy those. Uh, and now here we are. Uh, he's dropped. He he came right back. Two albums in the twelve and within what. Six months, six to eight months, I believe. Right. Yeah. Um. And 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 yet he uh that that needle hasn't moved more with or without Jay Z. So so we really can't even blame Jay Z on this either. Like, nah. You uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it it really didn't make or break either way. So so now what's the verdict, Jay Electronica fans? I I'd love to know. <laughs> Man, I'll, I'll say this. I've, I've had a theory like this once before. Jay Electronica never wanted to be a rapper. He just was a guy who could rap really well. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like he, okay. He's a he's an alien blessed with God-given talent. You know what I'm saying? Okay. The, hooper that can, the hooper that can hoop but didn't want to go to the NBA but just happened to make it there. Because <laughs> I, I, mean, I ain't got shit else to do. Why not? Type of thing. I'll because... Do. For this album to be, I want to say, 75 to 85 percent done, because some songs just like cut off. You can tell, <laughs> like, you could you could tell there was parts where Jay Elect was just like mumbling what could have been a verse there or yeah. the cadence of something to that could have been. I don't think he really like wanted to keep going. He just was like, 
all right, man, I'm done. Here, do with this what y'all want. You know, like, but just by happenstance, I fell into these good situations, and it is what it is. You know, here, Jay, do what you want with the album type of thing. Yeah, hey, and you know what? And with that said, hey, man, act two. I mean, obviously, it's unfinished. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I guess we're expecting act three uh, pretty soon. Um, Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Don't, look, look, hip-hop fans, do not do it to yourself. Do not <laughs> be expecting another j Like project anytime soon. You got two in 2020. Count your blessings. Theorize <laughs> on what could have been, how he could have been the GOAT. Write your think pieces. This is it. Like, I don't... <laughs> fam, fam, it took 10 years to get a follow-up to a mixtape mm. that was weird as hell that everybody fell in love with. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think, yeah, 13 years all together. So, like, right. nah, fam. You're not getting anything else anytime soon like when is the last time you saw a jlx feature you know what i'm saying right. like just don't don't do it to yourself it's okay you know he can't he ain't gonna deliver you know what i'm saying so <laughs> and but you know what though and listening to this album i think it's pretty good mm -hmm. but i see why he has some smoke for kendrick Earlier in the well, later in, in the mid to late 2020, 2010s. Okay. I see. I see why he has smoke for Kendrick. Because no. if this, go ahead. Oh, no, I was gonna say no, but the break break that down for the people. Let's hear it. Okay. Because if this album comes out before when it was supposed to say like this comes out right on time with the slight like yo, where's the album delay? Twenty twelve, late twenty eleven. Mm -hmm. This this is everything people clamored for. And what Good Kid Mad, Mad City ended up being. You know mm. what I'm saying? And, okay. well, at least because if you finish it, because just like with the sound bites and the introspective rhymes and the, you know, the uh, the abstract thoughts that Jay Electronica is kicking, he becomes the savior of hip hop. Mm. He is the guy. Like, Good Kid Mad City comes along, it still does what it does, but he is the guy. Mm -hmm. no, that doesn't. That doesn't happen. So Kendrick becomes the guy. And then Kendrick does it again. And then does it again. You know what I'm saying? And he's heaped all of this praise. We Y'all put him on the throne. We put him on the throne. I put myself in that. We put him on the throne as the dude. And Jay Electronica kind of looks at it like, that was supposed to be me. But he has no one else to blame but himself. Right. No, nobody else. Nobody else to blame but itself. Because just listening to the album, I was like, this, it's a good album in 2020, but it's from 2012, and it's unfinished. So if you put all of those things together in 2012, 2011, or whenever this was originally supposed to drop, and it's completed, like the thoughts are done all the way through, young guru, uh, uh, mix and masters the album, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Like we might be looking at him and his story and rap a different way, yeah. and it, it it's it's a it would be it's a mystery. I won't call it a tragic story, but it's definitely a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a mystery. Yeah, man. I mean, hey, that's that's why you seize your opportunity and your moment. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you know, somebody. I mean, the, all those adages are true. Like you know, if you don't. Work on your dreams. You'll, you'll watch somebody else do theirs, or somebody will pay you to build theirs, and all like all of those uh, anecdotes and analogies and and uh, switcheroo, mm -hmm. dunkaroos, and all of that. Like it's uh, yeah. it's very real. And yeah, because um, you Jones, you you are absolutely right. Like um, because Kendrick uh, Kendrick Lamar, uh, Jay Electronica never made a freshman list. Nope. And, uh, and, and and his album was more anticipated than anybody on the list. Uh, yep, that's but, a fact. But what, what what happened is he let two or three lists come out, and uh, and two or three of those guys were considered to have classics, and he still hadn't came out yet. <laughs> Man, <laughs> so it's like it, it's it's literally. Um, I mean, I I honestly put it down uh, right next to uh, Jada Kiss uh, missing his opportunity to to really be top five, dead or alive. You know what <clears> what Okay. Like as as he always thought and, and says he is, and I mean I I admire him for having this um, high self esteem and, and all of that, but 
I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, fam, you you let Kanye West come in here and just take over rap, bro. Like that wasn't supposed to happen. Like, you Ooh, let, yeah, you you you, you let Ti uh, switch labels and and outsell himself by a million every single year. I mean, every single <clears> release. <throat> You, yep. let, you let Ludacris come out of no fucking where and go and sell three million by album number two. It's like, dude, like you, um, sorry, I can't call you top five because the, the period that you should have ran, I watched other people take it from you. So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, exactly. That, so, you know, every everybody that was that was given the oop didn't didn't hit the dunk, man. Um, and, yep. and, we, and, uh, and that's been one thing about this era. That's been pretty crazy. I mean. You think about it. Uh, there's there's been a lot of guys, you know. Uh, I mean, even even you know what? Even even Drake didn't catch the oop like that. I mean, yeah, not not with Jay Prince and, and already being on the label with Wayne. Like that really yeah. wouldn't his trajectory wasn't supposed to be that. <laughs> like mm-hmm. like yeah. it really wasn't. Yeah. So you know, uh, you you got to seize those moments because. They're not guaranteed to come back around. And, and that doesn't mean that you're not a great artist. It doesn't mean that you're not a respected MC. It's just that, hey, your your plan versus your actual could deviate very broadly if you're not doing what is expected of you to do at the time that you are supposed to do it. Man, <laughs> look, Eminem wrote a whole song about it, man. You can't <laughs> miss your chance to blow. Because right. <laughs> opportunity <laughs> comes once in a lifetime. <laughs> right. You, da- hey, you damn right. So whenever, like, yo, I, I forget. I think it might have been Damon John. Uh, uh, he was like, uh, look, take the job and figure out how to do it later. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <Facts. laughs> you know what I'm saying? Facts. So, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. They was like, uh, or maybe that's the Think and Grow Rich. I forget. But well, whatever book I read it in, so it might be from Napoleon Hill. It was like, hey, take the opportunity and figure out how to do it later. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. you're right. Hey, look, if they wouldn't give you the rock, if they wouldn't give you the mic, if they wouldn't give you this moment and this opportunity, hey, look, just do the shit. Like, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. Just do it, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, bang it on lunch tables. You damn right. So Jones, um, the only uh song that I know I definitely listen to that I want to talk about, I should say, <laughs> is uh mm-hmm. is, is Be the Butcher, Lil Wayne yeah. and Big Sean Timeless. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you know me, Jones, you know how I give it up. I was really I was ready to not like this song just because Wayne mm-hmm. was on it. Um but <laughs> that's hater shit and I'm not a fucking hater. So Right, 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 right. Hey, this shit is hard, bro. <laughs> man, look. Look, bro, I can't wait for that album, man, burning the proof. Yeah, man. It's um I mean ben, Benny man, Benny is still rapping at a, a very high and hungry level. Yes. Uh, Griselda is doing exactly what they're supposed to do with the time that they have allotted. Like that's again just <laughs> Just going right back to the last topic, like yo, mm-hmm. like that. That's why I don't. Uh, I've never understood why the people that don't like Griselda or or didn't like them or or were slow to the movement. It's like yo, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do with their time. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And uh, I mean. And, and hey, I honor that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just, got just, to. You know what I'm saying? Just, just like I, I honor the um the aspect of of Quavo and Travis Scott, uh, both getting such high praise from people like Kanye and Ti and and the rest of the world. And I was like, hey, you know what? And they they did what they were supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They, they they booked all the features. They they booked all the studio time. They put all the projects they could out in that window. And and the conversation about hip hop changed. <laughs> yeah, and, and and now and now that they've went from quote faces of mumble rap to two of the uh, the pioneers of this new era of music. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you know, uh, I I look at Benny and uh, Conway and and Westside Gun is no different. It's like, hey, you know, even though uh, Rock Marciano was is is the blueprint of this land that exists. Uh, oh, okay. You know, they they are the guys that have. Pump new lifeblood into it, you know. Right. And uh, yeah, and, that's true. And and it, and it should be honored, and and it should be respected as such. Yeah, so, I agree with you. 
Uh, yeah, so you know, so this joint is this joint is super hard, timeless. Listen to it. Every everybody gets off on it. Yep, even Wayne. I'm saying it for you. Oh man, myself. I was look. I was gonna have to ask you about that, man. Like the Wayne feature. Come on, man. You see why he's one of the goats. <laughs> well, well, no, I I don't. But <laughs> I, and, and and I'll say this: I I enjoyed this song more than I enjoyed the one with uh with Wayne, Benny, and Conway too, actually. Oh yeah? yeah, yeah. Okay. Which that that one's not bad, but I I think I like this one more. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. Hey, but yeah, I mean, look, hey, people people can call Wayne whatever they like. I I call him a guy that's not in my personal top thirty. That's what that's what I call. Him. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> hey, hey, again, I just said my personal top thirty. I don't know what y'all right. do with right, the right. man. I know what I do with the man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, okay. Fair <laughs> yeah. enough. Fair enough. Oh, uh, begging on lunch tables. You damn right. Uh, Jones, any other joints that you want to highlight? Songs, projects? Oh, uh, man. Uh, go listen to that new reason. I haven't gotten a chance to give it a thorough listen. I'll probably be back next week with it. Mm -hmm. But, like, I liked his last project. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a guy that TDE needs to push. He can help, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Keep the ship rolling when, when Kendrick's not available. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. if Kendrick ever decides to leave the label, he could be the next guy if they really put some... Uh, Put some power behind them, you know what I'm saying? But that's about it, man. I didn't see nothing else too much this weekend that dropped that really was like, ooh, I got to run to type shit. Yeah. Uh, I definitely listened to some other singles, but again, nothing really moved me to the point where we need to give it extra airtime. But there is a lot of uh, music out there, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm personally about to listen to this uh, Trey Songs album. I'm sure he's going to rap a couple times on it. Uh, so, hey. so there's that. I, I didn't, and the only reason why I didn't listen to it this weekend because it's like 24 tracks or something crazy like that on there, and I just didn't have that kind of time. Even uh, even if he's going to croon from track one to track 24. So <laughs> I'll tell you on that. You know what I'm but you can but definitely keep that music uh, pumping. Uh, you know, it's still it's still supposed to be a pandemic. You're still supposed to be quarantining. You're still supposed to be spending the majority of your time in your home. So right, yeah. listen to some music if you're not developing the craft or a business, all right? Yeah, man. Wear a damn <laughs> ass when you step out. You oh, know? my God. <laughs> yes, please. You know what I mean? Banging on lunch tables. You damn right, man. Final words before we get out of here, Jones. Hey, man, look. <laughs> Don't be jail like Tronica, man. Don't miss the opportunity. <laughs> Don't don't miss your shot, man. You only get one life to live, and all those golden opportunities don't come around all the time, man. And look, if Shorty want to smash, and you got the opportunity, and she giving you the green light, believe it. Take that shot, man. If they offering you a little more money to work that gig, you know what I'm saying, and that that don't come around all the time, and you ain't got no real reason not to take it, take the shot, man. You know what I'm saying. Don't pass the ball. <laughs> Jay Electronica did what LeBron James did the other <laughs> night. <laughs> and Kendrick Lamar came along and won the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, don't man. be don't be that guy. So seize every opportunity that you have, man. You only get one life to live. Don't be Jay Electronica, but go listen to Act Two, Pads of Nobility, and enjoy the two Jay Electronica projects that you're ever gonna get in your life. Word. Word. <laughs> yeah, Jones, for, for my final word, I, I want to uh, highlight a, a challenge that I want to start incorporating on the show, Jones. Okay, what you got? It's uh, it's called the um, I Can Rap Better Than Max uh, <laughs> Challenge. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, yeah, I seen some of this. Yeah. What you talking about, man? Or, or, or can you rap better than Max Challenge? Whatever y'all want to call it. Mm. Um, mm. And, uh, and, and I, I've already thrown out a couple of uh, tracks. Um, I want to say Riller was one of them I threw out for sure. And um, ba basically, man, I won't front, man. I I'm sick and tired of a lot of people talking about how Megan Thee Stallion can't rap, bro. And and, yeah. and now I want people to prove it. <laughs> like, <laughs> just just yeah. that simple. I was like, oh, you rap better than Meg? Okay, well, hop on one of her beats and kill it. Rap, rap about whatever you want. You don't got to rap about pussy and money. You ain't got to rap about right. your dick and money. You can rap about whatever you want to rap about. And a couple, I just want to take the challenge. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing it. And uh, I, th I think we're going to play snippets on the show, Jones. 
And uh, oh, I'm with that. And, I am with that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, cause um, I, I and I think I could just play one, the first verse of Meg. Uh, you know what? It, whichever song, and then we'll play the first verse or the or the verse. For their song, and then and we'll just and we'll give honest assessment, honest assessment. I okay, mean, because, okay. Because is is Megan the greatest rapper in the world? No, she's not. No. Nah. But no. Nah. Uh, but I'll say this: I think she's firmly in the fifteen percent of people that can rap mm. better than the majority. I I have her there. That, I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Like, I, I got her in the fifteen percent. So so. Uh, if you think you're in the fifteen percent, or maybe the thirteen to twelve, submit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like Let us see what you got. You know what I'm saying? Let, yeah. Um, I, I, I picked uh, I picked Realer and Sex Talk. The, those beats, because and the reason why I picked those beats specifically, Jones, is because first of all, the beat is gonna carry your bars no matter what you're rapping about. So <laughs> you gave him a crutch? Yeah, absolutely. I was like, yeah, you know, because <laughs> okay. hey, because maybe it's just the production, right? Maybe, maybe mm. I mean, if she wouldn't get them kind of beats, you wouldn't even be feeling like that, Cam. Why are you even gonna say it like that, Cam? So okay, go well, back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bet. Right, like also, well, also well, bet. So why, why don't you pay, take one of these easy ass beats to rap to? And you pin your mm-hmm, verses, mm-hmm. and you and you send them to us for banging on lunch tables, and, and we'll have a compare and contrast. And um, Ooh, you, know, okay. you know, what I'm saying that this, this won't get you a deal, but at least you'll hear from me. Like, yo, I think you're better, better than Megan Thee Stallion. And I was like, oh man, you know what, fam? I'm just keeping it real. I think Meg might get you if it was around two. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, it, mm. it, could, it could be that. It could be that simple. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's um, it's it, it's the disrespect for me, as the as all the memes would yeah. say and the captions would say. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think especially as a woman in rap, I think I think we need to put more respect on Meg's name. I, and I'm just gonna say yeah. it, and, uh, I, and hopefully this is the start of that. Yeah, man, I'm very interested to see what y'all come up with, man. Because mm-hmm. yeah, I, it was a lot of cap on that app, man, man. talking about how uh, Meg can't rap or she just okay and all this other shit. Right. Well, show me that. Show right. me. Show me. <laughs> right. I, like I, we would love to see it. So. So, all right, so, hey, yo, dust y'all pins off, or, or if you're already in the booth, just go go ahead and cue that beat up. Uh, we'd love to mm-hmm. hear it. <laughs> yes, uh, we would. <laughs> man, uh, so, man, thank y'all for tuning in to the show this week. Uh, we uh, yeah. definitely appreciate the likes, the comments, the shares, and the uh, just the, the banter, the back and forth. Uh, we definitely appreciate it, and uh, we will keep ha- uh, we will keep this show going. Um, as long as Jones says so, and uh, yes, sir, yes, sir, <laughs> and, and, and also uh, we will look forward to bringing all the uh, the content that we can, and in a way that not many others are talking about it, because I think that's the also the part that makes hip hop special, and uh, we never want to stop doing that for you. Uh, so until yeah. so until next time, man, y'all already know it's fans over critics. Yes, sir. It's support what you love instead of bashing what you hate. Get it. And we always want you to be safe, be humble, and live hip hop. You damn right. It's the Banging on Lunch Tables podcast with Camp from the Port. And Mike Jones. And we are out. Yeah. <laughs>